Sarah, Jane, Parkinson. Now there is a sweet little lady you would like to have in your family. Isn't she sweet? Look how innocent that smile is. The girl next door. My, my, my. Just someone you trust, right? This is a uh, rabbit culture of narcissist ninjas. Come on over to our Facebook page if you want more information on narcissism. If you want to find out if you have a narcissist in your life, if you know you have a narcissist in your life, if you just want general information so that you never become involved with any of these crazies. Um, if you've never encountered one in your life, please congratulate yourself. And please learn all of the signs, all of the um possibilities uh if you do have someone like this around you it is not a fun experience believe me this case was near and dear to my heart and it put shivers down my backbone because i really related to it um and as difficult of a situation that this man found himself in, he is like me in that he is blessed because he lived and he also got out of the situation, did not end up marrying this monster. I believe these are the types of people that if you do end up marrying, marrying them, which was as well in my own personal case, I believe I would not have lived to tell the tale. And these people are the type of people that don't necessarily murder, though they can, but they set people up to get harmed in other ways. And, I, you know, when I read about the case, um, it was to, it hit a little, close to home. Now, Daniel was a sweet, caring individual. If you notice, uh, if you do know anything about the case, you find out or you know about the characters involved. Daniel was a sweet person by all accounts. He was a dog trainer when she met him, and um, which shows a lot of compassion usually. You know, usually people that are involved with animals, not always, but most of the time, have a compassionate side, can um can be not always it can be very empathetic souls he appeared to be that way he seemed very kind and very uh gentle you know that's just the vibe i got from him um she honed right in on that and of course he wanted the white picket fence dream and so did she so they got together planned a house planned a marriage doing all this he was building his house, he built his house, moved in, family accepted her. She didn't have any friends, but hey, there were little red flags, but nothing major, right? So they were going on about their lives. Next thing you know, Sarah Parkinson meets Scott White. Now we don't know exactly when she met him. I have a suspicion that she met this character before she even got involved with Daniel. I just have that little vibe. I could be wrong. There's nothing to uh, that I could find as evidence of that. But I go with my gut feeling a lot and I've I've even done some research on my gut feeling. 100% since my um, abusive situation, I have learned to trust my gut feeling. And like I said, I've done my own little action research on myself. <laughs> and when I have a feeling, you know, I test myself and say, okay, am I being paranoid or uh, is this real? And I'll jot it down. 
then the proof will show itself and 100% of the time I'm right about the in individual and the situation. That's not saying I'm always going to be forever right about everything I come up with or read or whatever, but I just have a gut feeling that she knew this person a fairly long time. All of a sudden, she gets a job in the police station. Scott White was a um, high-level police person. He was like a sergeant or something like that in in the police department. And this all took in a place in Australia, mind you. So things are a little different. But he was a higher-level person in the department. So she got a job there. Whoa, that was kind of freaky deaky, right? All of a sudden she works in the police department, right? Within a very short time of her working there, she gathered some allies and so on. And behind Daniel's back, she was preparing a case about him. She was saying he raped her. He abused her. Uh, he did all these different things. And quite, quite strongly managed to get her story across to the police to the point of where Daniel was arrested uh, and put in jail. So... This lady behind Daniel's back where it was spinning a tail and gathering evidence that which uh, there was no, she wasn't gathering evidence. There was no evidence. Just her story seemed to go over well at the police department because she was, of course, involved with a higher level senior police officer and his friends all got together and backed her story up without actually much evidence at all. She even went as far as when Dana was in jail, uh, she started to get nervous because his family was very supportive of him and doing a lot of legal things to try to help him. She got nervous of that, so guess what she did? She went to the father and concocted a story. I don't know if she went there and created some kind of timeline. I don't know. But she created a story where that she told the police that he raped her. And she tried to get charges on him. This lady was a pathological, crazy person. Um. Uh, I don't know. It's it's very disturbing that she got to be got to the level of, that she did. This family ended up um, losing everything they had. <clears throat> they lost everything economically, and they ended up even splitting apart because it was, <clears throat> excuse me, so stressful. And you know. <sighs> This um, Sarah ended up getting caught with her lies eventually, but it took years, took hundreds of thousands of dollars, and she only got three years in jail. Personally, I think she should have got a whole lot more. Three years, you know, for kind of mentally murdering these people. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the day when narcissistic mental abuse is on par with physical abuse. You can't see the scars of physical abuse. You can't see those mental scars. And oftentimes the manipulation is so strong and so deep and so underhanded that it goes undetected by people around. Now, when you look at this case, though, um, with her involvement with this police officer, uh, you got to wonder what's going on with him. You know, I have my suspicions about him too, because if you notice, uh, or I notice, he, he is hiding in the media. 
I got, I managed to find one side on picture of him and that was very recent. That was, it looked like a mistake that he, he managed to get, they got that picture of him. There is uh, very little evidence about him or like any kind of um, statements or information or even the leg legality seemed to be hushed up and it's very hard to get information about his case. So he is probably a higher level narcissist than she is. And if you look at the manipulation factor, perhaps he was wanting the home that Daniel built as much as Sarah did, you know, so he helped her with this story and he helped her concoct uh, this um, mirage of a case and then it seems their motive was money it seems that even though the family are not rich but they are probably stable economically right so narcissists on a whole this is their mode of operation double lives Cons, uh, manipulation, they feel entitled. This lady felt entitled and probably to this day don't see that she did anything wrong. She feels entitled to things for free. She doesn't feel she has to work for anything in life. Things should be handed to her. Um, it's okay to manipulate people to get what you want. That's probably what she's been taught over her life and it's worked for her, right? Most narcissists keep doing what they're doing because it works for them. It worked for them in their early childhood. So they just learn that pattern and they continue to do it in adulthood and nobody stops them. You know, and like I said, I'm looking forward to the day when um, mental abuse is on par and equally um held accountable as physical abuse this is a statement i think it was by the australian it was found in one thing this one i want to say too on a side note there is nothing like australian reporting i think it's like the best in the world for getting out details of court cases and information. When um, the coronavirus, you know, started, I got most of my updates and information from the Australian news because I feel they are more reputable, uh, not politically driven. I'm sure they are to some extent, but there just seems to be a more direct honesty with the media in Australia than here in America. And I found that the facts coming from Australia is like always on par, always on point. And I just love the Australian uh, media and I love the uh, accounting of different cases and the details that they give and the, the honesty that I see that I haven't really seen in other uh, countries, especially this one. Oh boy. So anyway, um, this guy said that he had gotten to the place where he wanted to end his life. He figured it would be better if he was out of the picture so his family didn't have to go through everything. And you know what? He seemed like the kind of person that cared more about his family than even himself. He didn't want his parents <laughs> to to go through all that and to lose everything. He felt deeply ashamed of that and deeply guilty. And he um, really, really seemed to suffer in that way. And he wanted to get, to, you know, he got to a point where he felt he should end his life. Thank goodness he didn't because, you know, he didn't deserve that. And the thing is, narcissists in general, love that 
they love getting a person to the point where they feel they have nothing left to live for. It gives them almost a high if they create that kind of a mentality in a person. It gives them what's known as narcissistic supply, and it gives them a sense of control and dominance. And they can commit murder that way without laying a finger on anyone, right? So here you have the innocent face, the angelic face of the narcissist. That's what got me in the beginning, too. My narcissist, I guess you could call it that, uh, had a very sweet, angelic look and presented himself with such decorum, such empathy. They're very good actors. But one thing about it, the acting can only last so long. You know, an actor who does it for a living, I think they can keep up. You know, they know how to, they have the tools and the resources to, they understand how to keep it up, keep it going for a career, right? The narcissist often doesn't have that intellect or ability to connect that this, if they're putting on an act, they need to keep it up. But eventually, with enough pressure, enough uh, um, not accepting of their behavior, the, the mask will fall. It just does. But it takes people standing up to them, questioning them, um, not accepting their abuse, not accepting their BS. and holding them accountable for their lies you know that's what it takes and until more people do that narcissism is going to continue to be uh, a major disruptor in our society and it won't be found in the court systems to be a major problem that it is um so much work to do guys and we need more people involved and one good thing about it narcissism is becoming more public and information is rampant and is growing and more people are speaking out and that's a good thing right all right i hope you uh, got something out of this and <clears throat> Come over and see me at Narcissist Ninjas.